What do I do for regular maintenance on my V8 swapped, solid axle swapped, 89 Toyota pickup? Let's talk about it. Brought to you in part by Alpine Toyota. So as some of you guys noticed in the comments, over the past couple of weeks, I've been absent. And the reason for that, well, <laughs> I've been sick. I'm finally feeling better, just in time to get this thing ready to go for the upcoming toy run this weekend. And as you guys know, over the course of this year, I've been super busy building that uh, third gen 4Runner for my wife, which means my Toyota pickup has been pretty neglected this year. And I've been putting aside my normal maintenance schedule for this thing to handle this build. So I figured now would be a good time to show you guys what that looks like. To start off, I have all new wheel bearings, front and rear. Regardless of the condition of these in the truck, I like to do wheel bearings once a year just to be safe. Also, last time I drove this thing, I noticed a clunk in the steering. So I suspect maybe one of my tie rods or multiple of my tie rods are out. Because I don't have that part and I don't know what the problem is, let's start by checking out the tie rods. All right. Oh yeah, there's some play in there. It's not coming from this side. That tie rod's good. So if I wiggle, oh, I can see it. And just like that, I already found the problem. Uh, the tie rod on the other side of the steering rod here, over there, it's got a lot of play. All right, so now that I know what that issue is, it's a pretty straightforward fix. I'm gonna put this tire back down on the ground straighten the wheels, and then without bumping the steering or moving the tires, I'm going to remove just that one tie rod so that when I put the new tie rod in, I'll just match where it was and it should slide right back into that steering arm and my alignment should still be true. Man. New approach. It wants to spin from the other side. We're gonna let it spin from the other side. This side is being a pain to get off in the truck, uh, especially because it's the further back tie rod and the front tie rod is blocking it. I'm just gonna remove that whole drag link between the two tires and replace the tie rods <laughs> um, outside of the truck. I can still keep my alignment as long as I mark the overall length of that tie rod with both ends on it. So let's do that. Can I, can I weasel this out of here? That is the other question. I'm not sure I can. It'll still be easy to figure out my alignment if I pull the tire off. <laughs> I'm just trying to avoid it. But I think it'll just be easier. Let's rip a tire off. Actually, I might not even need to take it off. It's out. However, my dreams of keeping the alignment, <laughs> not so much. Now, this next step, Pretty straightforward. Put this guy on the ground. Mark that guy on the floor. Mark that guy on the floor. Mark the rod position too. So now, when I get new tie rods, I decided I'm gonna replace both because I kinda mangled this one taking it out. Um, I just set up the tie rod leg, the, these marks, slap it back in the truck in my alignment should be identical. So now I'm gonna head to the auto parts store, get a couple of FJ80 tie rod ends. If you guys don't know, the Trail Gear High Steer Kit uses uh, Land Cruiser FJ80 tie rods, so super easy to find parts for this. All right, got the new tie rods. So we'll throw this guy in the vise. I do need to save these jam nuts. I looked in the package of the new tie rods, it does not come with them. Okay. 
This side is the reverse thread side, so uh, tightening it takes it off, and uh, that definitely just confused me a bit. Loosen to tighten. Okay, one side done. So the last time I replaced these uh, would have been just after the fire, um, probably around, when was the fire last year? Yeah, probably would have been around March last year. So I've got over a year out of these tie rods, not too bad. I'm fairly certain these are dirt cheap like Rock Auto ones. Wow, that's tight. Really? Wow! Look at it's tight! It's pulling the vice out of the bench. Damn. Alright. We are not playing nice anymore. Cutting that sucker, and I bought a socket, fully impacted off. Aha! You're screwed now! Sucker's coming free. That sucker is coming free now. You watch it. Biggest impact I own. What a pain. That's a win though. But like, bet you that's hot. Yep. Gonna tighten this one and do all the adjustments on the other side. Okay. All right. Let's take this to the floor and make sure these line up for marks. So this guy line the bar up right there. Okay. We go one more thread. Tighten the this side jam nut and throw this in the truck. Time for part two of today's job, and that is wheel bearings. Although, they're probably fine. <laughs> it's making zero noise. I have the part, so I'm gonna change it anyways. Alright. So yeah, while I'm in here, part of my normal like front end maintenance would be, I'm gonna check, make sure the trunnion bearings are still good, the inner axle seal is still good, which I think it actually <laughs> might be. So we'll pull pretty much this whole hub assembly apart, re-grease everything needs to be re-greased, and uh, put in the new wheel bearings and throw it all together. Take the locking hub off. Just cracking them loose of the impact. Ugh, can't quite back them all the way off. Ah, take that. Get these cone washers out. Okay. You know what, though? 
If I remember correctly, last time I blew up this berth, I think I replaced that inner axle seal then. So if we're lucky, uh, if the gear oil or if the grease around the berth looks fine, we'll be all right. Uh, yeah, no, there's still good grease around the bearings. Yeah, okay, that axle seal Pretty sure it's just fine. I see zero reason to go further at this point. This is all still good grease here. Um, and like, and look at the back, like my axle seal doesn't appear to be leaking. And now that I'm in here, it jogs my memory that I did that axle seal when I blew up the berth back in May. And this thing's only been wheeling a couple times since then, so not really a surprise, but that's still fine. Yeah, no play in the trunnion, nothing like that. So I'm gonna say we're good to just set up the new bearings in that hub, slap it back together. Cool. There we go. Knock these races out. There. Another race. This here is a race driver kit. If you don't have one of these, you should definitely get one. You can see they're cupped like this and fit perfectly over the races. Then take this guy, bolt it down, and then she's ready to hammer. And because this is dead center, it should distribute the load nice and evenly, and you don't need to worry about the race jamming up on you. Boom. And I'm doing this on the wood block so that I don't damage the studs. And this race is a slightly different size. This one. Yep. Okay. Now for the fun part, where we get all greasy and pack those bearings. So you just push, push the grease through just like this in the cup of your hand and you'll see it comes out the top. Rotate it and keep going until we get grease all the way through the bearing, all the way around it. And yeah, this is a very messy job. Um, if you have gloves, probably worth wearing. <laughs> I don't. That is a packed bearing. Do yourself a favor, take the other side of the packaging while you don't have greasy hands. And there's the other one. Now, before we flip this back over to put this other bearing in, it is time to put the wheel seal back in, or the new wheel seal in, I should say. So, what I like to do for that is to use this race driver again, but flipped on its back, like that. Done. These race drivers just make life so much easier. Put this guy back in here. And then back over to the spindle. I like to pre-lube the spindle. I'm not entirely sure how necessary this is, but it makes me feel better about it. Grab the hub. Work her on, just like that. Then goes this keyed wheel bearing retainer and one of these wheel bearing nuts. Okay, tighten this guy up. Move it around, break it free. Now, the inside one, I like to get good and snug. And you know it won't go anywhere because it is getting this lock ring that you bend the tabs over on. And then the outer one, I bring up to, I take out my torque wrench and go to 50 foot pounds. Then you know it's not gonna go anywhere. Slide this guy over. And then the outside nut gets tightened down to 50 foot pounds. Okay, make sure that still spins freely, and it does. Flat blade screwdriver. Bend a couple of these tabs where you can. So this guy. Time to reassemble the brakes. So there goes the rotor, and now goes the caliper. I already looked at my pads and everything. They're all still really good. They were also replaced. Uh, after the fire, I believe, or shortly after the fire. My front shocks are definitely toast. Slowly after the fire decided to show that, nope, they're in fact not fine. They're completely blown out. So I will be looking for another 10 inch shock in the near future. I'll probably end up going to Bill Schemes again, but uh, let me know in the comments below if you guys have found a better shock. Uh, these are the 5100s, they're a 10 inch shock. They seem to work great, but if you guys have a bud better, uh, like budget friendly, let's say, option, let me know in the comments below, I'll check them out. There we go. And just like that, 
one side is complete. Now to repeat this on the other side and the rear, which is a completely different story. They're uh, a bit more difficult to do, but let's get at her. I'm gonna let you guys in on like the YouTube side of things here. You know what's really funny? Like this side probably took me like two hours to do with filming everything I'm doing. And the, we say everything takes twice as long when you're filming because it's true. <laughs> you're always thinking about whether you should move the camera, what you should talk about to kind of like, you know, keep you guys entertained, I guess, during the process of that. On the other side, however, when I time-lapsed it so I wasn't even thinking of you guys, Sorry. 25 minutes! Done! Let's figure, uh, let you guys know. Alright, it's another day and it is time to do the rear wheel bearings in my Toyota pickup. And unfortunately, there's a 5 liter uh, Coyote motor in the way. Uh, that has nothing to do with anything we're gonna do on the channel, this is just getting uh, thrown in my buddy Corey's uh, 16 F-150 to replace its bad motor, which is fine, he's doing it in my shop, but I gotta move it so I can pull that tire off. I didn't like that, that tried to rotate. So just like the front, we're going to jack it up and do one side at a time. In a lot of ways, the rear is easier, but in some, it's more difficult. It's a non-serviceable bearing in these, and they actually get pressed onto the axle shaft. And I don't have a press. So you guys are about to find out how I do this without a press. But first, we gotta take off the e-brake, the brake line, the brake line hard line, all four of these axle bolts at the back here are the drum bolts. I've already pinched off the soft line uh, coming down to the axle so that we shouldn't lose like all the brake pressure, pressure in the system and shouldn't need to bleed it too badly. We'll start with that. I've converted my e-brake to run a nut and a bolt instead of that pin that always gets rusty and stuck. So this job specifically is nice and easy. Now we need a 10 mil line wrench and we will take this brake line off. Now there's one, two, three, four bolts holding the drum on, so we'll get those taken off. And this whole drum assembly axle shaft will pop right out. Now this guy should slide right out of here. Just like that. All right, now that this guy is out, you can see the wheel bearing we're gonna replace. It's that orange thing right there. Um, so there is a snap ring right here that I need to take out and then I need to push this bearing out somehow. And I've got a special homemade tool for that. There we go. And this guy right here is the fan dangly tool I was telling you about. It's essentially a plate with four holes drilled to match these studs here, a hole in the center and this big piece of, uh, I don't know, probably like four inch square too. So that guy goes over that just like that. Grab your bolts that held the drum in place on the axle, tighten those down, and then all you're gonna do is hold it upside down just like this and you're going to drop this whole thing onto a nice thick layer of concrete. So we moved outside to where I typically do this. It was hurting the concrete floor in the shop and there's 
concrete here, which is already broken and I don't care about it, so. And I can get more leverage out here. I feel like possibly, possibly my shoes are like way out of adjustment here. The drum is off. And it was stuck. So I bet that had a lot to do with our problems I'm trying to separate this. Oh, well, one thing I learned while taking this drum off is these shoes are cooked. Ha! Ah. <laughs> oh, sometimes this is a lot easier. Now I need to figure out what I need to buy for the drums. Here's the dilemma. Like what happens when you work on trucks, sometimes you get into things and you realize more stuff is wrong than you thought it was and where I won on the front end, I'm not here. I noticed when I took the cover or the drum off of my rear drums, it just looks, looks bad in there. And this pad is severely worn through. And this one, this, this brake shoe actually snapped in half. It, it flung up into my face when uh, separating the wheel bearing. Not only that, the springs look crusty. This drum just, it just needs a rebuild. It's Wednesday, uh, late Wednesday, like late in the afternoon anyways. I'd imagine uh, the parts store has what I need, but whether I can get it done in time for the toy run is a whole other thing because, well, parts cost money and I wasn't prepared to spend more on this specific project. And I should have. I should have had drums, everything ready to go from Rock Auto or something. That would cost a lot less. But is what it is. It's just the reality of building trucks sometimes. So I'm gonna make some calls. I'm gonna figure out what it's gonna cost me to finish this job. Uh, knowing what I do know, if I can get the springs and the shoes for this side, I will. I'll replace the wheel bearing on this side and I'll forget about the other side for the time being, um, just so I can get out this weekend, which sucks, but I know that I need to do the other side and I will in the near future. All right, it took all day, but we're back on track. Uh, luckily, shoes and the hardware kit wasn't as expensive as I thought it was, so we did end up purchasing both sides. So let's get to work. So first, we're gonna remove the drum from this tool. We're not gonna set up the brakes with it separate. It's just easier to set up brakes in place. So we'll just ignore the new parts for now. Tool separated. Now we should be able to knock that bearing out of there. Yep, sliding out. Well, I managed to record this without audio somehow, so voiceover and time lapse, it is. Anyways, this part is pretty straightforward. You use an old drum and then take your axle shaft and put the studs of the axle shaft inside the old drum. Then take the drum you're going to use and slide that over top of the axle shaft and then you're ready to install the new wheel bearing. Just slide it right over the axle shaft. And what I like to do is use a pipe just wider than the diameter of the axle shaft and use that as a slide hammer and push down, continually beating on the wheel bearing until it finds its way into its home. And then repeat that process with the wheel bearing retainer and then put the snap ring back in place. So before we slide the drum back in here, I have a brand new seal for this location. So. Pop that guy out, use our race tool again. Perfect, now I can slide this guy. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a mess. You know, some days it just doesn't work out for you. Like, I recorded a bunch of stuff in slow-mo earlier that I didn't want to record in slow-mo. Uh, needing to replace these brakes that I wasn't planning on it. Looks like I need a new uh, wheel cylinder as well. Sweet, luckily, like, I had one in stock. Today's over, just not winning today. I'm gonna put the tools down, tomorrow is another day. Well, welcome back. It is a, another day in paradise here. We, uh, darting fresh. Whole new mindset, 
today we're gonna be successful. I'm not gonna let this truck beat me. Really, the job I'm doing is not that difficult. It says yesterday I was just having, just having a day. You, you know how it goes. Some, di some days you have good days, some days you just, everything decides to fight you when you're working on trucks like this. So let's, uh, yeah, let's have a good day. Let's finish setting up the new uh, brake shoes and spring kit and throw that new wheel cylinder in that I did happen to have in my inventory. Now I believe Guys held on up a couple of 10 mil bolts. That are quite crusty. One. Oh yeah, those are crusty. I'm gonna try to replace those while I'm at it. Two. Eh. Hammer. Aha. Yep, that looks like the exact same part. Found a couple of new bolts for this that aren't quite as crusty. Okay. Don't want to tighten these too much because they are tiny little bolts. Just play nice, please. Come on! Oh, my hands are so cold! What if I use a socket? It'd be harder to control. Aha! Aha! Don't fall! Alright, now this guy. This clearly goes in here, just like that. You're telling me that guy has to come up and over. Aha! All right, like that. Okay, now let's see about getting this pin in. Oh, I was so close. Oh, come on. It can be so finicky when it's cold. Whoa! That was fun. I'm having a heck of a time turning this. Uh, this was like stupid cold. It was left in the shop overnight, it is freezing temperatures, and it was frozen. Um, so what I did is I put this on the wood stove for five minutes, got her nice and toasty, and uh, like, the difference is pretty significant actually, from a frozen spring to not. So, oh that is so much easier. Alright. I gotta see something. I can't physically compress the spring enough. Are these guys different sizes? Yes. Are you a different size? That one's even taller. There's something funky going on with these. This one is significantly shorter. They're actually all different sizes. And, my and this one's, look, look at, look. Look at the difference in height. Flat bottom. One of these, the one I've been fighting with for the past half an hour, probably not half an hour, but 20 minutes at least, is, is, is shorter. That explains literally everything. So check this out. We'll put the longer one in, and I bet you, first try, it's, this is going to work. Straighten that guy out. Wow! I'm dumbfounded. Hey, it worked. Not complaining. Glad I found the solution. But like, how stupid is that? Alright, bottom spring time. There. Alright. Now, how far out of adjustment are you? Very. Okay. Aha! Okay. And that is... Brake shoes and hardware done. Alright, so now that this side of the rear is done, honestly, I'm gonna call it. <laughs> uh, this project took way more time than I thought, unfortunately. I gotta edit this video and get it up for you guys tomorrow, so I just simply don't have time to do the other side and edit to get this video out for you. But hey, as I said, uploading it tomorrow, which is Friday. Uh, you guys know we have a very loose upload schedule. Sometimes it's Friday, sometimes it's Sunday. And the reason I'm uploading it on Friday this week is to let you guys know that I'll be at the Toy Run on Saturday. The details for that are in the description below. Hope to see you guys there. And hey, that's about it. Anyways, guys, if you give me a huge favor, smash that thumbs up button. And hey, consider subscribing. I upload weekly Toyota building, wheeling, and off-roading content. Anyways, I'll catch you next week. Yeah. I'ma get it how I wanna get it, you don't get it I can do anything, I don't got a limit I'ma make my mind up, I'm committed It might take some time, might take a minute I won't give up, I don't give in this shit I do what I want when I wanna do it Call it a power or call it a gift I call it persistence to driving some wit uh, I ain't no minute man Good things take time when I'm in it man Give me some time and I'm with a fan Now I'm gone too far from the beginning man I can teach you but you gotta listen I got lessons, all lessons to give them Think the masters of hoping and wishing And thinking and driven and cutting the ribbons uh.